Hello everyone. In today's video we're going to tie this fly uh, which has only two materials in it and it looks super buggy, super flow, super buoyant and it imitates yellow sallies. It's on the large scale definitely for yellow sally but considering that there are many species of yellow sally and you don't need to use this one as yellow sally it can be an attractor obviously because it's pretty like it's visible and it's like uh, going to be visible for the fish especially in some summer sunny day or I would use this definitely uh, just before dark gets completely dark and it's black and so you need something highly visible this is one of the flies that I would use very very gladly so without any further ado let's just hop into tying and see how to tie this line now for the hook I'm using uh, TMCO 900BL let's talk about other materials here obviously uh, body legs in thorax legs wings are CDC but there is an under wing which is uh, poly yarn which is basically marshmallow uh, fibers uh, I made a video about this fly marshmallow fly so this is poly yarn so not much to it like you can use anything you have uh, you can use even uh, this uh, yarns that are for parachute posts so for example this one just find uh, color that you want so this is by hairline uh, just use whatever you have at your hands so that's okay now thread is uh, 8 through 0 in yellow obviously to match the, the whole fly and I'm going to start fly in a regular fashion uh, somewhere where I want my legs to begin thorax or legs whatever you want to call it it's going to be bushy here so as you can see I'm not using a reverse gem hitch because I want to catch my material at the end of the fly near the hook band. So for the first step I'm going to use yellow CDC. Uh, for this purpose you can use larger ones which are oval in shape. And usually it's a goose. Um, goose uh, CDC would be good for this. So something like this is okay. And then twisting the bobbin holder counterclockwise making two soft wraps and then pulling all those barbs through with rakes and then catching the CDC by the very tip. Now if you watched my previous video that I posted this Wednesday uh, you saw that I see I'm not doing touch and wraps now here it's not super important. Uh, if you watched my video on Wednesday it's a short one one minute uh, I discussed how to uh, twist materials to make them jump into your band hook band or the other way around if you have that need. I was using embroidery thread for that purpose and for this pur for this fly I'm using CDC so I'm going to twist it counterclockwise like so to make it corded and to make segmentation in the body but more importantly look at this I release the pressure the material is going to jump towards the hook band and then I make a wrap and then next wrap I can make soft and then release the pressure and the material itself will, it's going to migrate towards the hook band a little bit okay now you can obviously help it by placing it very near the, the the previous wrap but it's not so important if you have it the other way around it it's it will tend to jump to, towards the hook eye and then you have to fight your material instead of fighting your materials it's slide it out instead of fighting your materials it's better to know them and to use them to your advantage obviously so after each wrap I make one or two turns make oops heckle pliers needs to be definitely tightened more because this is the second time that my feather is sliding out and I'm not even applying super super hard pressure anyway just wrap it and wrap it and then when you reach near the half of the hook just wrap everything together like so leaving those legs to stick okay this is going to be very very tight one but never 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 mind I need to take it by the quill as you can see okay exactly where I want it now look at this I'm going to use to do something that's maybe uh, not, not usual I'm going to release the pressure 
uh, on the feather and I'll just pull on my on my thread so when I was holding the, the rakis I made two wraps with my thread that are not tight and then as I switched I switched the pressure so I released the pressure from the feather and applied pressure on the on the thread which means that I can apply that uh, I can release oh I made this complicated yeah I know so just switch the pressure from the feather to your thread so you can release the feather anyway I'm going to catch those barbs that are sticking out and I'm gonna use them because I I want them here definitely and I want this rakis to be on the side of the hook I don't want it to be on the top and to do that I can make to uh, make it there pull towards yourself and the wrap will actually push it towards the hook okay this was not very good explanation here I guess used too many words to say too little sorry for that so I made also a taper when I was cutting rakes I made a taper and now I'm going to use this marshmallow marshmallow fibers and they they have those knots here do not by knot so just do one knot and then go down and solve the, the next knot and that's it you just need one strand of it which you will double so what I like to do is I like to place it if you look from this side I like to place it on the side and a little bit on on the top of the hook set hook so I create a V if looked from above one two three three wraps and then I'll just fold this one and I'll just now you can see the bulb over here creating this this bulky part which I'll pull and try to eliminate also by placing the thread exactly over it okay now I placed in a fan uh, in a fan shape more or less the wing but it will look like V when I get finished now you don't cut it flush I just like to go like this and sort of taper it a little bit I just think it looks a little bit nicer let me show you I think it looks better now it's turned to time to put some wings on additional wings obviously now look at this I'm gonna just do something very simple it's like I'm gonna cut these from the bottom to make it sit even lower in the surface and then we see okay I place this wing a little bit too to the side but now it's okay anyway now it's time to put those feathers and I was using oval for the body but this triangle shape is going to be for the wings and I don't need much like two feathers is more more than enough it's plenty I'm just so I'm going to align the tips pull them and then align with the poly yarn over here now counter spin the bobbin holder as you can see I'm placing everything on the top of the hook shank here because now when I make a spin of the bobbin holder and I place one soft wrap two soft wraps and then tighten everything up then up and that's three wraps which should be plenty then I'll place a couple of locking wraps over here I'll cut buttons by an angle unwrap locking wraps because I have tension to lock everything down and I'm going to tighten everything here oops I think rake is cut my thread here it's not a pressure anyway I'm going to create dubbing loop here one two and then just place it back now I don't need uh, I don't need a thread I don't I don't want thread to jump off the hook so I'll just place I'll just place those wrap the the whip finish at the hook eye now I need half of the feather for the thorax area I'll place it in the dubbing loop I just love to use dubbing loop uh, it's 
somehow more convenient usually than using a split thread because I can spin it more hard and catch those materials better. I'm using longer barbs to go further away from the hook and uh, shorter ones are going to be closer to the hook. Yeah. Okay, my dubbing twister. It's one of those tools that you buy once in your life and unless you lose it, you're gonna have it all your life. Okay, I'll slide everything very close because if you don't slide it close, you'll have some empty wraps. Let's call them empty, like it's not useful to your fly if you don't have it close. Just twist it again counterclockwise. That's it. I have a nice dubbing loop and because, uh, yeah, dubbing loop. And because those barbs were perpendicular to the thread, I didn't catch any, so I don't need to brush it out or something like that. So whenever you insert materials into the dubbing loop, try not to cross them uh, between each other. So if they are parallel to each other and perpendicular to the thread, you shouldn't be uh, you shouldn't have any issues with uh, placing them where you, where you want them and making this nice dubbing brush dubbing brush dubbing loop whatever. So. Be careful not to displace the wings at this point. Okay, and then wrap. And after each wrap, just pull back all those barbs. Okay, here I like to do something very simple. I wrap the thread twice around the, the tying thread. I wrap the loop around the tying thread twice and then I'll just place it backwards like so so I lock it so it doesn't go out especially important if you're doing with a GSP if you're using regular thread it's not it, it's not so important and I want to be sure that I'm making web finish with a flat thread because I don't want to break my thread it's already frayed for some reason I don't know why so it can cause me some trouble, but it didn't, because it's flat. I guess it's just slide it through the knot. But just in case, I'll do just another one. I don't want. Uh, I don't want it unraveled. So now, to cut it, put some tension on the hook, and then just put the blade onto the tying thread. Uh, if necessary, you can just on out those barbs to see where you're at go through the fly and that's it finished fly low riding very buoyant um, I don't know if I mentioned it um, the reason why I'm putting the poly yarn here is because it prevents matting those barbs CDC barbs together when the fish gets the fly it adds a little bit of buoyancy and definitely it adds a little bit of shine to this fly uh, maybe a little bit more sort of wing real wing look because wings on most insects uh, stoneflies with the translucent wings they have some some shimmer into it I think so uh, if you like this fly guys hope to see you again and thank you very very much for your time thank you for watching and see you again